어, Selfish is Richard Dawkins Chapter A Battle of the Generation Let us begin by tackling the first of the question posed at the end of the last chapter Should your mother have favorites or should she be equally altruistic toward all her children? At the risk of being boring, I must yet begin through in my customary warning. The word favorite carries no subjective con connotations and the word should do no moral ones. I am threatening a model as a machine programmed to do everything in its power to propagate copies of the genes which ride inside it. Since you and I are humans who know what it's like to have a conscious purposes, it's convenient for me to use the language of the purpose as a metaphor in explaining the behavior of a survival machine. In practice, what would it mean to say a mother had a favorite child? It would mean she would invest her resources unequally among her children. The resources that a mother has available to invest consist of a variety of things. Food is the obvious one. Together with the effort expended in gathering food, since this in itself costs the mother something, risk undergone in protecting young from predators is another resource which the mother can spend or refuse to spend. Energy and time devoted to nest or home maintenance, protection from the element, and in some species, time spent in teaching children are valuable resources. Each a parent can allocate to children equally or unequally as she choose. It's difficult to think of a common current in which to measure all these resources that a parent can invest, just as human society uses money as a universally compatible currency which can be translated into food or land or laboring time. So we require a currency in which to measure resources that an individual survival machine may invest in another individual's life. In particular, a children's life, a measure of energy such as the calorie is tempting. And some ecologists have devoted themselves to the account of energy cost in nature. This is inadequate though, because it's only loosely compatible into the currency that really matters, the gold standard of evolution, gene survival. R.L. Tribbles, in 1972, literally solved the problem with his concept of parental investment, although reading between the closed packed lines, one field, that Sir Ronald Fisher, the greatest biologist of the 20th century, mean much the same thing in 1930 by his parental expenditure. Parental investment, PI, is defined as any investment by the parent in an individual offspring that increases the offspring's chance of surviving, and hence reproductive success at the cost of a parent's ability to invest in other offspring. The beauty of Schreiber's parental investment is that it's measured in units very close to the unit that really matter. When a child uses up some of its mother's milk, the amount of milk consumed is measured not its pint, not in calorie, but in unit of detriment to other children of the same mother. For instance, if a mother 
has two babies, X and Y, and X drinks one pint of milk, a major part of the PI that this pint represents is measured in units of increased probability that Y will die because he did not drink that pint. PI is measured in units of decrease in life expectancy of other children or were yet to be born. Parental investment is not quite an ideal measure because it over uh, over emphasizes the importance of the parent against the other genetic relationship. Ideally, we should use a generalized altruism investment measure. Individual A may be said to invest in individual B, and A increases B's chance of survival. The cost of A's ability to invest in other individuals, including herself, or cost being weighted by the appropriate relatedness. Thus, a parent investment in any one child should ideally be measured in terms of detriment of life expectancy, not only for other children, but of the nephew, niece, herself, etc. In many respects, however, this is just a quibble. The trivial measure is well worth using in practice. Now, any particular adult individual has in her whole lifetime a certain total quantity of PI available to invest in children and other relatives and in herself, but for simplicity, we consider only children. This represents the sum of all the poor she can gather of or manufacture in a lifetime of work, all the risk she is prepared to take and all the energy and effort that she is available, able to put into the wealth of children. How should a young female, female setting out on her adult life invest her life resources? How would it be a wise investment for life for her to follow? We have already seen from Rep theory that she should not spread her investment too thinly among too many children. That way, she lose too many genes. She won't have enough grandchildren. On the other hand, she must not devote all her investment to too few children. Spoiled bread. She may virtually guarantee herself some grandchildren, but rivals who invest in the optimum number of children will end up with more grandchildren. So much of the even-handed investment policies. Our present industry is in whether we could ever pay a mother to invest unequally among her children, i.e. in whether she should have favorites. The answer is that there is no general reason for a mother to have favorites. Her relatedness to all her children is the same. Half. Her optimal strategy is to invest equally in the largest number of children that she can lay to the JG and they have children of their own. But as we have already seen, some individuals are better life insurance risk than others. An undersized lunch bears just as many as a huge mother genes which is more thriving little mate. But his life expansion is less. Another way to put this is that he needs more than his fair share of parental investment just to end up equal to his brothers. Depending on the circumstance, it may pay a mother to refuse to feed her lunch and allocate all of his share of her parental investment to his brother and sisters. Indeed, 
It may pay her to feed him to his brother and sister, or to eat him herself and use him to make milk. Mother pigs do sometimes devour their young, but I don't know whether they pick especially on lunch. Lunch constitutes a particular example. We can make some more general prediction about how a mother's tendency to invest in her child might be affected by his age. If she has a straight choice between the saving the life of the one child and saving the life of another, and if the one she does not save is bound to die, and she should prefer the old one. This is because she stands to lose her higher proportion of her life's parental investment if he dies than he, his little brother dies. Perhaps a better way to put this is that if she saves her little brother, she still have to invest some costly resource in him just to get him up to the age of the big brother. On the other hand, if the choice is not such a stark life to that choice, a best bet might be to prefer the younger one. For instance, suppose her dilemma is whether to give a particular morsel of food to a little child or a big one. The big one is likely to be more capable of finding his own food unaided. Therefore, if she stopped feeding him, he would not necessarily die. On the other hand, the little one, who is too young to find the food for himself, would be more likely to die if his mother gave the food to his big brother, now even though the mother would prefer the little brother to die rather than the big brother, she may still give the food to the little one, because the big one is unlikely to die anyway. This is why mama mothers win their children rather than going to feeding them infinitely throughout their lives. There comes a time in the life of a child when a paid mother to divert investment from him into future children. When this moment comes, she will want to win him. A mother who had some way to knowing that she had her last child might be expected to continue to invest all her resources in him for the rest of her life. And perhaps so him well into other two. Nevertheless, she should weigh up whether he would not pay her more to invest her uh, grandchildren or nephew and niece, since although there are half as closely related to her as her own children, their capacity to benefit from her investment may be more than double that of one of her own children.